All right, so if you're just tuning in, it's our ladies' night out, and we are reviewing what um, some of our leaders and people in authority had to say. Uh, please watch this clip. Is it the responsibility of the military alone? It's the responsibility of everybody to keep alert and find safety when necessary. But we shouldn't be cowards. At times, the banditry will come, only come with about three rounds of ammunition when they fire shot, everybody runs. In our younger days, we stand to fight any aggression coming to us. I don't know why people are running away from my mano, 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 thing like that. They should stand and let this, uh, let these people know that even the villagers, they have the competence and capability to defend themselves. But our own duty is to ensure no Nigerian is hurt and we're capable of pretend, uh, protecting the integrity of this nation. And we will continue to do it. <sighs> Please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. 8038463. We also open our phone lines. Please, when you're calling in, turn down the volume of your television set completely before you say what you have to say. Thank you so much for cooperating in advance. <laughs> All right, so um, this is another leader. Right. You know, what do you make, you know, what sense can you make of, of what he said? I mean, one of the things I highlighted um, or my brain picked up was um, the fact that we should not be coward, that everybody should be uh, responsible for their safety. And I checked up meaning of coward, just so we're right. A coward is a person who lacks courage in facing danger, difficulty, opposition, pain, a timid or easily intimidated person. Now, a person who lacks courage in facing danger, right? So these are people who move around with security men. Why do you move around with security men? Because you know that you're in imminent danger. So if you are so bold and you don't want to run away, why are you moving Fanatic around? Coward. Yeah, why are you moving around with security? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you're telling people who don't have, I mean, guns are not legalized in Nigeria. The highest weapon you could have is maybe your kitchen knife or the machete or I don't know, maybe wood or Pocket mortar and knife. pestle. That's literally the only spray. exactly. That's literally the only weapon you see in a typical Nigerian home. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do you expect them to defend themselves against people against people who have maybe gone access to guns, whether local or uh, uh, official guns? How do you expect them to? And you're telling me that these people they have just maybe three or four guns in the. But I'm sorry, one bullet is enough to kill a person, mm. right? So if you're not providing security, I don't think you should have been saying that because. Politics is a more sensitive These are lives involved. It's a more sensitive issue. Really? Yes, ah, it is. Fancy, don't switch. No, 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 no. Hey, no, this, this is my life. This is a more sensitive issue. We're talking about lives. We're talking about bandits. Say the same thing. Um, what this video just shows us, and it's something that we've we've tried to demonstrate so much um, on ways, is that we have a leadership problem in Nigeria. Absolutely. It doesn't matter whether it's of the faith, of whichever faith, doesn't matter whether it's political. Governance, yeah. We have so many examples of leaders with verbal diarrhea. Hi. Because when I listen to this, I, I would like to, and you know what, what pained me the most in this clip was as soon as he said that, and then he says, oh, you are asking me so many questions. The reporter was quick to apologize. Sorry, sir. And I'm thinking, go for the jugular. I need you to explain this thing that you have just said, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, Asante, I won't even come from the perspective, even though I do agree with you, I won't even come from the perspective of security because you could agree that everywhere in the world, a defense minister would have security, right? But you see, clearly, the honorable minister has nine lives because he can afford to give three away to the three bullets they come with mm. and then have six, perhaps another five to fight with, then have one to live another day. Sadly, the average Nigerian only has one life. Mm -hmm. But you know, the more painful thing for me is that he has demonstrated, I think I said it last week on the show, that Nigeria continuously has no value for human life. Because when we say that we are responsible for security, but in the same vein, we say, you know what, put yourself in harm's way to prove how mm -hmm. courageous you are. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like courage six feet under. You're in the ground, you're in the ground. To dust you shall go. But even, even at that, so, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so when you say that, it just goes to show 
that our values in our leaders are misplaced. Hmm. What he because was... everything he said in that statement was one contradiction after the other. Okay. Um, don't be afraid. Be courageous. Hmm. Run to the bullets and fight. Don't be cowards. But it is our responsibility to secure you. Hmm. If you're doing your job, sir, then why are bullets flying? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, there's something he said about, you know, um, when he, sorry, when he was talking, I just remember that we've been, we've been our security for, for the longest of time that I can remember. I mean, if you go to different estates, Uti, I'm sure you have security guards there. In my estate, we have the, I mean, it's a mixture of vigilante. And you pay estate so, dues? Yes, we've, we've been, when it comes to security, right, I don't really know the role of our, minister, our Ministry of Defense because a lot of people have long, 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 you know, provided personal security. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but we have a call. Let me take a call and I'll continue the conversation. Thank you for joining us this evening. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello? Yes, thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Good evening. Um, the issue we have in this country is the issue of value system. We don't have value system in this country. And that is the problem we have. You are listening to what the Minister for Defense just said. But he is somebody with a military personnel standing behind him with guns. So who is the coward? Thank you so much for your the call. The average Nigerian outside, or the person who, is just, who just spoke to us. Hmm. Thank you so much for your call, Francis. All right, so, so I mean, <laughs> when you call people cowards that have been taken, you, we've been taking the hit. Taking a hit. For a I very mean, the, long the, time. The protest that happened was us coming out boldly to say we are tired of these things. Mm -hmm. Because this is something you continuously face all the time. Like you rightly said, guns are not legalized. If guns were legalized in this country, trust me, a lot of people will have guns. I'm sorry whoever is calling. Call the phone line and the number on the display. Because the number here, we cannot take calls here. So if you're watching, call the line on display. They keep calling the, <laughs> the WhatsApp number, but we can't take that call. But let's take some comments on WhatsApp quickly, because we have loads of comments. Okay, so um, this one says, words are the greatest catalyst that reveal our identity and humanity in life. So we should be mindful of our semantics, because less words, less problems. And then the second message, we are in a pandemic, and someone uses words like, I don't mind it continuing because I am prosperous. When so many economic hard, with, with so many economic hardships all around, that is really selfish and very sad. Yomi from Bagada. Okay, Uti, you have some. Um, so, yeah, so I have a few here. The first one is from Ui, and he says, there is no justification for a minister to own a private jet. There are lost sheep in the community. Have you attended to them? A uh, second one is from Omar. Omar says, do we understand Christianity at all? A pastor with three private jets, why? A followership with hunger, where is the love? And the last one says, <laughs> Apostle Suleiman is not new to controversy. If it's not sexual, it will be Miss Yan. I just need pity the gullibles. Okay. All right, so I think we have Richard from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Yeah, good evening, guys. Thank you so much for calling. Yes, um, um, we put it, put it um, as simple as a plain. With the, with the churches, I think they have a problem with PR. And um, that's why somehow I, I would like this karma law to come in place. Because if the karma law was in place, no pastor would come and stand on the pulpit and start talking about the number of jets that they have. Because when they go through their books, and they find that anything wrong with their books. They just take over. Another thing they just talked about the leadership deficit. If you if you look at the way the man was talking, what were you expecting him to say? The guy is deficient. He doesn't know what he's just one. He was even qualified to be there in the first place. If not because of the water system, the way they run this country, we need to be minister of defense. Do you understand? You are telling people to defend themselves. You know why there is, a, there is an ABC standing behind you? It, it is sad. Let him show the example by driving himself from Abuja to Kaduna and come back. When he has done that, then I would, I would be the next person to do it. Do you understand? It, it's just sad. Thank you. This PR problem with these churches, if they can sort it out. Let me tell you the truth. I don't want to put a blanket thing on pastors. 
there are pastors that would never make this kind of mistake, even yeah. if they are 20 years, they won't make this kind of mistake. Yeah. But when you feel you are the you are the CEO, the GO, or the whatever, all and all in your church, you can stand and make this kind of this kind of careless statement from your pulpit. Thank but you I so much, them Richard. To God, I call them to judge them. Thank you so Thank much, you. Richard. All right, so um, you you didn't put your name. You says the defense minister or the minister of defense. Hmm. He's so detached from reality. And that's what I, that was the point I was trying to make about the fact that people don't understand. We, if, you, if you are talking about security and defending ourselves, I mean, mm. when the one million boys thing happened, you remember how people came out, started doing bonfires at night mm. just to keep and protect themselves. So we've been doing that for a very long time. But we have more comments quickly before we can take um, more calls. All right, I'll take one. This says, good evening, ladies. In a good democratic world, Minister of Defense should be sacked immediately for altering that statement. However, he should tender an apology to all of Nigeria and be sent up front to face Boko Haram with native dress. Oh, this well. Remy from Lagos, are you there? Thank you so much for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Are you there? Hello? Okay, Uti, we're having trouble with Rami, right. so... so uh, Hello, can you hear me I now? Have a okay, I can hear you now. now. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about what the Minister of Defense said. Okay, go ahead, please. I think that the government must not shy away from its responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I think responsibility is the key word that the government doesn't seem to understand. Mm -hmm. If we can actually understand that this is what the government is supposed to do for me, and this is what they are doing or they are not doing. And the government can apologize or even work on improving their situation, then Nigeria can get better. But if they don't even understand that it's their responsibility in the first place, mm -hmm. then where do we start? Thank you so much, I think Remy. that's my two cents. Thank you so much, Remy. Uti, let me get your comments. Yeah, so I was saying this is from Enoch in Ibadan, and it says, I'm so ashamed of the people we call our leaders and depend on to defend us in times like this, where they ought to live up to their expectations of protecting lives and properties of their subjects. Listening to the whole Minister of Defense talking like a, wow, talking like a towel to the motor park is so disheartening. It's very obvious that this country has totally been destroyed by illiterates and leadership positions in Nigeria. Okay, so now, hmm. because why we, why, we, why we placed both words side by side? was to, to help people to understand. This is not a conversation to bash anybody to say this. We just want leaders to begin to take responsibility. I mean, I love what Remy said, right? Leaders begin to take responsibility and understand that there is a lot of people that their lives, you understand, are dependent on what comes out, your utterances. Mm -hmm. Even they said the power of life and death lies in our tongue. So when you understand that power that you possess as a leader, you, are, you have so much. So even if everybody would do some things, so some things as a leader you should never be caught dead doing. Let me take one more call, then I'll come to Uti and Sanzi. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Yes, good evening. I am Preston, calling from Delta State. Okay, thank you, Preston. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to the program and I heard about Apostle Suleiman and uh, the, what the Defense Minister also spoke about. Yeah. Uh, for the Apostle Suleiman's own uh, preaching, I listened to it while you guys were on the program and I saw that what he said there was not actually uh, to slight uh, or to make people feel that he was enjoying uh, the the pandemic that was going on. Mm -hmm. Listen to that uh, uh, preaching, you will see that he was actually saying that from what my the intent of what he was saying was that during the pandemic, God was still favoring him. Yeah, I, that I is how that. I saw what he said. Okay. Then concerning. Uh, the jet that I spoke about. If you know how some people bless this, these uh, ministers, you'll be you you you'll be amazed. Hmm. Okay. He's telling you that he had three jets, even during the process of pan 
if you know how people go out about giving them gifts, you'll be shocked. So okay. sometimes let's not Thank you so much, uh, feel that what they are saying is uh, basically to slight people that no people problem. are suffering out there. Thank because you. now looking at uh, how beautiful you people there now, will I now start judging you that you are wearing 10,000 naira a week or 20,000 naira a week or 500,000 naira a week that people are poor in your environment that you are supposed to take care of? I understand you, uh, Priste. So that, <laughs> but what I would not do is come, come on air and tell you how much I bought the wig or something. Oh, but, but Pristine, thank you so much for your call. I, because, you see, there's one more thing that we missed out on Apostle Suleiman when he was talking about owning a printing press in his house and all of that. But that's, that's not really our conversation. We are just, what we are trying to do, and, and I like what you said, we're not here to judge anybody. I, and I made, I made reference to the fact that that conversation might be giving hope to someone. But we are saying that as a leader, there's a responsibility that you, you carry. And if you understand the responsibility and the weight of your words, you will watch your words carefully. Uti, let me come to you, then I'll come to Sanzi, because we are running out of time. So um, I, I enjoyed the... Uh, thank you to Preston for sharing that perspective, and I can see Sanzi nodding. Again, <laughs> gifts are a wonderful thing. If he has been gifted a private jet, I still keep saying it. The things that we find acceptable in Nigeria, it worries me that somebody could gift you a private jet. Hello, in a country that web in Nigeria, <laughs> healthcare, rubbish, education, rubbish, the very security. But well, somebody can afford to gift a private jet. Let's just private just say that it was in fact a gift. It is where I have a bigger problem with that. Yeah, if but I... even then, if you were gifted, somebody gifts you a private jet. And don't come to me and tell me that the poor will always be with us. Yes, the poor will always be with us. There are various degrees of richness and whatever you want to call it. But there are better things you could do with your gifts. Absolutely. We can't just be accepting everything and say that it's a gift. I okay, let me agree. let me take one more call. Yes, Sorry, Sanzi. <laughs> Final call. We have so many calls. Obi from Lagos. Thank you so much for holding on. Let's hear what you have to say quickly in one minute. Obi, are you there? Or did we lose him? Yeah, my my comment is this. Yes, my comment is this. If scientists were to discover a group of monkeys, um, and one of those monkeys decides to um, gather all the bananas that they gave it, while there were a couple of monkeys starving in that zoo or in that cage, scientists would sit down for the next 10 or 15 years to study what made that monkey leave and decide to hold all the bananas while there were lots of starving monkeys. So it's very ab abnormal for people to hoard wealth or food or whatever it is as valuable to others while they are starving people around us. So I think monkeys and animals are better than us sometimes because these are things animals will not do. Yes, we can hoard wealth, get our pastors or politicians and brag about it on air while we have millions of people starving below minimum wage here in Nigeria. It's, it's absurd, it's shocking. Thank it's you. Easy. Thank you, Obi, for your call. All right, so Sanzi. Well, <laughs> starting with what Uti ended with, somebody gifts me a private jet, I will announce it to the world like, hey, somebody gave me a private jet. <laughs> you know, but um, the question about where they're getting most of this money is from. Um, People gift them, yes. And I, I think it's important we understand that ministers solve a lot of spiritual problems. And these spiritual problems, sometimes they don't have value. Like, you can't attach an exact value to it. So let's say someone brought your child, prayed, and your child came back to life. Sanzi, you're still missing the point. So it's not about all of those things. I know. I, like, I'm, you're I'm, missing I'm, the I'm, point. I'm trying to clear out something. Let so me, when somebody brings your child back to life, there is no value to your child. So you no give value. them 300 million naira there's, because you can't afford that's it. Not that's not what we're talking problem. about. I mean, you're missing. It's not point. a hundred million okay naira. so all right I, i'll just i'll just go down to the point okay this is the one thing that i feel he maybe shouldn't have said you know the part about um being in covid and what was it that he's thankful he felt like covid shouldn't end that was 
perhaps an insensitive statement. That's what we're saying. So, um, but yet, yet again, in the context of it, it wasn't exactly okay. insensitive. But looking at it from a global view outside of the church, that was insensitive. His statement was ridiculous. Everyone can have a justification from the Bible. Tides conversation have both sides backed by the Bible. Too many religious ship of uh, that's Ohi from Magodo. Then ha have we not seen the new trends of ladies gifting each other cars or men? Same. Gifts by Nigerians, Bumi, just laughing. Then finally, I think this person didn't drop their name. Say, please, my sister, inform Nigerian government that is those in office to know that who we who are in, aside the outside the country are not happy for killing our brothers and sisters. I don't understand who killed your brothers and sisters. All right, so but I think um, we've we've had a fantastic conversation. Yes, we right. Have. We've had a fantastic conversation. We've been able to uh, to help our leaders understand that yes we know you're blessed we know that yes god was blessing you through covid and all of that we know that i mean for the defense minister it's a complete no-no i think he should come out to apologize because if you're talking about defending ourselves we've been defending ourselves it's been a long time we've been defending ourselves Still therefore date. for the um for the pastors right and ministers of god because a lot of people truly trust what you say they hold on to everything you say yes i get the part that you want to encourage your followers and give them faith and hope for greater things. But let us also be sensitive and be careful with the kind of choice of words, especially at this times that we're at. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Sanzi. <laughs> so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell a friend to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. A word is dead when it is said. Some say, I say, it just begins to live that day. So this is very powerful. So because whatever it is, you are planted a seed. A word is a seed that you are planted. So we'll see you live tomorrow. Be careful with the words that you say. See you. <laughs>